my neighborhood had just appeared a massive hotel. It looked very luxurious. When the hotel was built, it was inevitable that people would talk about it. The hotel used to be an old apartment building. It was the most famous building in my neighborhood for being haunted. When the apartment building was still in operation, people living here all heard the cry of a woman lying on the top floor of the building. The crying was very loud, making many people in the building uncomfortable because they could not sleep. The crying kept echoing no matter how much the neighbors reminded the building management this situation did not decrease. The problem continued until the people living in the building could not bear it anymore and chose to solve it themselves. Until one day, the people in the building couldn't stand the crying. They decided to come together to remind the owner to check and see what was happening. The men who lived in the building at the time followed the cry together, going upstairs to check it out. Later, they located the room where the crying was coming from but the door had long been locked from the outside. Outside of the door was also a closed thick layer of dust. So a neighbor in the next room opened the door to let the men go into the mysterious room through the connecting corridor between the two rooms. Once outside, the men also felt a little strange that the glass door looked very dusty as if no one had been there in a long time. A brave person took the initiative to go to the front look into the window to try to break the door to enter the house. But unexpectedly inside the room were no people except for a girl's soul which appeared. Hearing the noise the girl immediately turned her face to the window revealing a white horrible face with white eyes that were bleeding red blood instead of tears. The girl's ghost found out about the strangers, suddenly became aggressive and wanted to fly out to chase away the men who were looking at her. The man just witnessed the horror scene, feeling extremely panicked and unable to bear it. He ran as fast as he could to his room. From that day on, that cry grew louder and louder. It echoed throughout the corridors of each room. Many people also saw the girl's ghost in the abandoned room it was wearing a red dress. That ghost was crying and hovering in the corridor all along. The residents in the building could not stand this. One after another moved their houses to another place. Rumors of the ghost in the building were getting louder and louder. No one dared to come to this building anymore. After all of the residents had moved out, only the elderly couple remained in the building. The couple reluctantly stayed in the building because they had nowhere else to live. But every night the elderly couple received strange phone calls from whom they didn't know. At first they thought that someone was trying to break up the couple, but this lasted so long that the couple panicked. Every time the wife picked up the phone, there was no one on the other end of the line but only a cry, like the cry of the dead girl's soul. After that, the power lines in the building were also frequently broken. Every time that strange phone call came in, the electricity in the building would be completely turned off. The TV in the room was also interfered with, making the elderly couple gradually feel afraid and couldn't stand it anymore. Finally, the older couple also moved to another place. The building was inactive and has been abandoned ever since. Since the day the building was abandoned, no one dared to come near the building but the homeless who needed a place to stay. But so far, no one dared to stay there for a full night because people would hear the screams of homeless people sleeping in the middle of the night. The whole building was immersed in the dark, scary, silent, attracting the attention of curious people. Many people in the neighborhood every night went passing by the building and they saw the spirit of a girl standing outside the window with white eyes. Young people, because they were so curious about the ghostly rumors surrounding the building, they did not hesitate to come and explore. They went in as a group, exploring every nook and cranny of the house with its ruins. The air inside the building was colder than many people thought. Leaves and trash were scattered all over the corridor. They entered the room that was said to be haunted, and around there was nothing else besides the old items. 
A moment later, the young people immediately shouted in panic when they discovered something extremely horrifying. In front of them, there was a red cloth. It was similar to the rumor about the girl in the red dress that was often mentioned. There's nothing here, uh, so, so it's just a rumor, said one young man. After checking, they did not find anything strange, so the group thought that the rumors about the girl's ghost was not true. From that moment on, the whole room had strange cold winds, causing the people in the room to feel a little scared. But because they did not believe the rumors, the group decided to continue to the other rooms to check. They entered a room at the end of the corridor. The size of the room here was also somewhat smaller than the other rooms. The interior did not have much furniture like the other rooms, and there was only one chair in the middle of the room. The young people also discovered many broken trees and a lot of small rocks lying around the chair on the floor. Everyone in the group started to get scared and discuss what had happened here. The only thing that interested them the most was the stool in the middle of the room. Many people began to question the origin of the other girl's soul. But no matter how much that were discussed, all the reasons given were too reasonable and irrational, making things even more stressful. A moment later from within the wall appeared a girl with a red dress rushing towards a group of young people. The group started to panic, scream and started to run, but the girl in the red dress kept chasing them down. The group quickly ran out of the building and made the ghostly rumors about this building become even more noticeable. The press and media also began to cover the building with questions raised about the mysteries there. The building then became more famous and noticed by many people. There were many people who did not hesitate to stay there overnight to verify the rumors. But not long after that, the whole building was sealed and a high-class hotel was built there. Strangely, after that, the hotel did well and did not appear to have any strange events. Last winter, I had an appointment to go to the hometown of one of my college club members. That night, we went to his village skating ring to try this new sport. The three of us tried ice skating together to see who had finished the first. Near the finish line, everyone tried their best to speed up to show their bravery and win for themselves. In the end, I was the runner-up and my friend in the group came first, while the host came in last. We both rested and talked happily, but we had no idea what was going to happen. Just a moment later, my best friend suddenly stood up and walked forward with a dazed attitude. We tried to call him, but he refused to turn back and just went straight to a certain point. He passed through people skating in front of him, towards the pine forest nearby. After a while, he tripped over a large ice hole and immediately fell into it. The two of us stood far away and saw the scene. We panicked and shouted to get everyone's attention and help. Immediately, the people around also rushed over and gave us a hand to save our friend. At this time, our friend's whole body was cold and heavy. It took two strong men to carry him to safety. His whole body was shaking. Fortunately, he still survived. But there was still something very panicky, he felt. We quickly dressed him up and took him home. After a while he regained his composure and said that he didn't accidentally fall down. Then he told us the whole story, the reason why we went to that cold water hall and fell down like that. He said that, at the time, he saw in his eyes that he was trying his best to catch up with the two of us in front. Right at that moment he saw a shadow passing by his side in a very strange way which attracted his attention. My friend turned to see in the cold, faint ice. He saw a boy about 15 years old with a thin body looking at my friend and smiling. My friend didn't think too much. He just felt that the boy was a bit strange in such cold weather. The boy wasn't dressed up properly. But in that moment my friend was hypnotized. He lost his mind and didn't know anything anymore. After that my friend just followed behind the boy. 
he didn't know that the strange boy was swimming in the cold water below the ice. At the waterhole where the incident happened, that strange boy was below and called my friend's name. That made my friend look like an idiot with his feet on the surface of the hole. Immediately my friend was awakened by the cold water, but everything turned out to be more terrifying than he could ever imagine. In front of him now there was no longer the boy he saw, but instead a dead corpse with both eyes falling out. This made the two of us feel both worried and scared after seeing this incident. We didn't know what horror stories would happen after this. That night, we went out to sleep. The whole family of the friend in the accident also began to gather to discuss how to solve this horror story. It seemed that after hearing the story and the location of the accident, his family members were extremely worried. That night, while everyone was discussing, my friend chose a corner of the house to sit and start saying very strange things. He started saying reproaches to his loved ones, recounting stories from his father's youth in a voice filled with disappointment. When his father heard it, he was immediately scared, got up and walked towards his place. His whole body was shaking. But my friend kept muttering strange words. He spoke in a completely different voice from usual and recounted the story that his parents had been lent money by a relative to repair the house in great detail. The stories he had told his parents were all stories that had happened to two people at the time when he wasn't even born. His father couldn't say anything else but stood stunned looking at him and he stood up, his eyes wide with anger, his face full of fear. Then he glanced at his father and shouted loudly, blaming his father for why he did not help him when he was in trouble. Only now did his father know that the person in his body at that time was his brother who died a long time ago, also at the same place where it crashed. His whole family was shocked by this. At first his family thought he was playing pranks on them until he said the name of the deceased. His family's uncles began to look at each other in fear. Everyone knew that since this man died, no one in the family had mentioned this name anymore. Everyone who was present in the accident that year had to stand up and beg the soul in its body for forgiveness for letting him die in such a painful way. Everyone explained that. At that time, no one knew that he had an accident because he was so in love with skating. Until they couldn't find him, he began to look for him but he was found dead. Faced with the sincere words of his brothers, the soul in the body did not want to make it difficult for its family. Each pain began to subside and the eyes also decreased somehow. After a while he fell silent and then staggered, finally falling to the ground. His whole body was cold and somehow less heavy than before. His parents went over to pick him up. Everyone remembered the old story but in their hearts couldn't hide their emotions because they remembered their lost loved one. That unexpected incident was finally resolved. My friend also regained his sanity but still couldn't stop panicking because he didn't know what had happened to him. This happened when I was about 10 years old and living in my old hometown, a small village. Most of the people in the village chose to work as farmers, trading fruits and vegetables to the big cities, but my family was a little different. My father discovered that selling mushrooms was a lucrative business, so he began trading an easy to grow mushrooms. Mushrooms grew very well and made a lot of money for my family because of the soil compatibility but he didn't grow them at home, instead on a mountain near the village where it was quieter and had a better climate to grow mushrooms. That day while eating, I overheard my father telling my mother that he would have to go to the mushroom farm tomorrow to check on the situation. I was curious and wanted to go there to see what it was like to grow mushrooms, but my mother stopped me. My father, on the other hand, was interested because I had begun to care about the family business, so he agreed to let me come with him tomorrow, despite my mother's persistent nagging. The car arrived early the next morning to pick me up with him. 
It was a small truck owned by a villager who worked as a hired driver. My mom came out to see me and my father off. She saw us got into the truck, while she continued to remind me to follow my father and never deviate from this path. Because it was a truck, there were no passenger seats, so my father and I sat in the back of the truck. Seeing how worried I was, my father reassured me that everything would be fine. He'd just go up there for a bit and then return home. The truck just kept going forward, leaving a cloud of black smoke behind. I fell asleep two or three times, but still, we hadn't arrived every time I awoke. My father said it took more than an hour. I also wonder why it took so long to go to the edge of the village. My father explained that the truck couldn't go fast because the road was very difficult and the ground was full of rocks. At this point, I noticed that instead of houses, I was seeing craggy cliffs and tall grasses because no one had cleaned them in a long time. The truck couldn't go fast because one side of the road was a deep abyss and the other was a cliff. But it was okay because we would arrive after more than 10 minutes. My father told the driver what time to come back to pick us up and then said goodbye to him. My father and I then had to walk up the hill following a small path surrounded by dense forests. We had walked for a long time and still hadn't arrived. I was tired and sweaty. My father had no intention of stopping to rest and he warned me not to stay in this forest for too long, so he urged me to try a little harder. Fortunately, it only took about 20 minutes to get there, even though my legs felt like they were about to fall off and breathing fast. Then I noticed a small house with numerous mushroom growing mounds in front of it. Inside there was an old man. He poured water for my father and me to drink and my father immediately discussed something important with him. It appeared to be related to the sale and export of the mushrooms to the other regions, but due to some difficulties, they discussed it tensely. I was thirsty and drank a full glass of water while my father was continuing to converse with the old man. I was too young at the time to understand what the two of them were talking about. I was just sitting still and a little bored. This place wasn't so entertaining as I expected. After that I felt the need to urinate, so I asked the old man where the toilet was, but he said it didn't exist and that I could go to the yard and go whenever I wanted. So I dashed out the door to deal with it. My father and the man were still engrossed in their conversation, not paying attention to me leaving. I was pulling up my pants after I finished, when I noticed a large white rabbit in front of me. The rabbit noticed me and dashed into the woods. I was bored, so when I saw the rabbit I chased it for fun, not remembering my mother's advice before leaving. The rabbit kept running faster while I was trying my best to catch up. I couldn't keep up with it until it reached the fence that separated the mushroom growing area from the forest. At the time, I was hesitant to go further because it appeared to be a little dark in front of me, but the rabbit seemed to want me to play with it, and when I stopped, it also stopped and turned to look at me as a fifth waiting for me. I jumped over the fence, no longer worried, and went straight into the forest ahead and grossed in chasing the white rabbit without knowing where it was leading me to. After a while of running, I came to a T-junction and the rabbit vanished without a trace, leaving me perplexed. Then I slowly walked back, looking around for the white rabbit, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't see it. How could it go away so fast? I'd seen it ahead of me and then it vanished just like that. I was walking around looking for it when something touched my forehead from above as if it were hanging down from a tree. I panicked when I looked up because that thing was a body. It was hanging down in front of me and my forehead had touched the feet of the body. I couldn't move my legs and couldn't even scream. I could just stare at the body hanging from a tree branch above my head in panic. This was my first time seeing the scene and it freaked me out. I would never forget what I'd just seen. His face was grey and decomposing. Insects were eating his face. I quickly gathered my courage and turned to flee. But as soon as I turned around, my eyes were met with something even more horrifying. When I was chasing the white rabbit, I didn't see this at all. 
It was a series of bodies hanging from the trees. I guessed more than five people had committed suicide here. I wasn't sure if there were any other bodies in the forest. But I didn't have time to think about it because the panic made me freeze. My legs couldn't move. I thought my heart could jump out of my chest. My eyes darkened and I passed out without realizing it. I couldn't remember what happened after that. All I remembered was hearing my father's voice in my ear when I woke up. It appeared they found me and brought me home. The old man and my dad both knew what was going on. They just didn't know how I got into that place because the area was deep inside and the road was difficult to go to because of the many turns. I inquired about the bodies, but the old man and my father did not want me to know about them, most likely because I was too young to understand these matters. The two of them simply asked me to rest for a while and then return home. After a while, when I became older, I heard people in the village talking about those bodies. Apparently they were hired workers for a large company in the area, but were exploited to the extreme. So they chose suicide. The story I was told happened a long time ago. It happened in a luxurious apartment complex in the neighborhood where I lived. There used to be a very nice apartment located on the top floor of the building and it had the most expensive rent in the area. Previously the room was rented by a young couple. The wife often had a habit of bathing at night and staying in the bathroom for a long time to clean herself before going to bed. At that time as usual the wife locked herself in the bathroom. But after waiting too long without seeing his wife come out, the husband would stood outside and impatiently called his wife. Afraid of her husband's anxiety, the wife tried to finish quickly to get out and let her husband use the bathroom. Standing alone in front of the large mirror in the bathroom, she suddenly felt pressure in her heart. She felt that the atmosphere in the bathroom today was a bit quieter and colder than usual. Outside, she heard the sound of footsteps slowly approaching. The footsteps kept echoing, but she immediately realized that it was not her husband's footsteps. While she was busy observing the door outside in front of the mirror, another image of her was looking at her with horrible eyes. The young girl at first still didn't know what was happening to her. She still calmly took a towel to wipe her face quickly. But it was also at that moment when her eyes involuntarily glanced at the large mirror opposite her. She saw the reflection in the mirror that was a bit different from herself which surprised her. She hadn't been able to determine if what she saw was an illusion or not when suddenly the person in the mirror glanced up at her and gave her a devilish smile. When the wife saw it she panicked and screamed. Her feet quickly stepped back, her face became very pale. Then, following her inertia, she fell and hit the door. Her whole body fell and she couldn't even stand. She once again looked in the mirror to check, but the woman in the mirror had disappeared as if nothing had happened. Her husband outside heard the noise, so he rushed inside and opened the door to check. But because she was so scared, she could only stand shaking. She did not know how to tell her husband the strange story. She could only stammer on clear sentences. Her eyes were looking into the mirror for a signal. Unfortunately, when her husband appeared, those strange things ended. However, her husband thought that she was so tired that she was confused and he took her out. But the woman was sure that someone was looking at her. When the bathroom door was closed, the strange woman immediately reappeared with a face full of intrigue. That night, the family of this young couple who had just moved in encountered a strange disaster that they had never seen before. When the wife tried to tell her husband about the horror story she encountered, the husband remained silent, his face showing content, and he did not believe what the wife had said. That silence made the wife feel angry. She blurted out saying goodbye to her husband, but he had just lowered his head as if silently agreeing with what she said. After a while, the two of them argued loudly with each other. The first time the husband got too angry with his wife and then loudly proposed to break up. After he finished speaking, he quietly walked out, 
while the wife looked at her husband silently, feeling that there was something very disappointing in her heart. That night, she stayed alone in the newly rented room and burst into tears, thinking that her husband's feelings had changed and no longer loved her as before. In the middle of the night, she sat waiting for her husband in the living room but still did not see her husband return home. The young wife was sad. She was holding her face while sobbing. Right at that moment from the bathroom suddenly appeared the figure of a woman gliding towards the wife, her eyes constantly looking at the wife crying on the chair. She stood beside the wife silently. Apparently the wife didn't even know about the strange woman's presence in the room. The only thing she could do at this moment was burst into tears like a baby. The sadness just killed her heart. Seeing that the woman took advantage of the opportunity, she bent down and whispered into the wife's mind extremely negative things about the love that she and her husband had for each other for so long. The wife felt that this woman was telling the truth, so she stopped crying and looked at the strange woman with a very pitiful expression. The woman's eyes suddenly lit up like two car lights and kept looking at the girl in front of her for a second. Then she gave a devilish smile. Her eyes also shining scarily as if she was plotting something. The young girl was immediately hypnotized by the witch's gaze, becoming lifeless and insane, no longer aware of anything else. After that, she stood from afar directing the young wife to do foolish things to be able to hold her husband's pity. The wife obeyed the witch's words, subconsciously went to the cupboard in the room and took out a sleeping pill bottle. But there was one thing that the wife still did not expect. That was, this wooden cabinet was actually the closet of an old owner who used to rent this room. Even the sleeping pill she found was a bottle that had been in the cupboard for a long time that she had not cleaned since moving there. At first, she looked at the bottle in her hand with a little hesitation, but when the strange woman appeared and whispered in her ear, Immediately she poured all the pills in the bottle into her hand and drank them all at once. She could feel the discomfort and burning slowly in her body. A moment later with the effect of pills causing the girl's body to appear convulsive, saliva also flowed on both sides of her mouth, the wife immediately passed out on the floor with a cold body. The last images she saw were of a strange woman with a smile that couldn't take her eyes off her. She smiled delightfully. It seemed that this witch had been wanting this for a long time and she was enjoying it very much. The whole room then sunk into the cold. No one knew that the young wife was in trouble in that room. Fortunately, the husband, because he didn't call his wife, he worriedly ran home. When he arrived, his wife's body became much weaker. He saw his wife lying on the floor and immediately ran over to check on her. As soon as he arrived, he found a long expired sleeping pill lying on the floor, a hunch that seemed to tell him something. He immediately called an ambulance and ran to help his wife up. He was so worried at the time. The wife then opened her eyes slightly when she heard her husband's call, but her body was already frozen and couldn't move at all. A few minutes later, the ambulance also appeared. The husband and a few other doctors together took the wife into the ambulance and took her to the hospital. Fortunately, the wife was discovered in time, so her life was saved and when she regained consciousness, she told her husband everything. The husband then began to believe what his wife had said and learned about the history of the room from the people around and then he found out that the young woman used to rent this house to live with her boyfriend. While they were living there, somehow the two of them had a big fight. Then the cold husband left, leaving his wife alone in the house. The wife then, because she was too traumatized and she thought about it, used sleeping pills that were in the house to commit suicide and died right in that bedroom. After discovering the girl's body, the building staff also cleaned it up, but the remaining belongings of the girl were still intact which inadvertently caused the girl's soul to stay there and unable to get out. It seemed like the ghost was waiting for other women in the same situation to incite them to commit suicide in her place.
A few years ago, when I was a senior in high school, my school organized a one-night picnic in a rural area quite far from the city. We used to think that this picnic would be the happiest trip in everyone's life because this trip was the last memory of our school days. But perhaps it was just a wrong thought because that trip left us with a haunting memory. We also lost a friend who was once very close. My school bus arrived just as the sun was starting to set and it was dusk. The bus stopped next to a small village. My class teacher at the time became a reluctant guide, directing us to gather in a line to avoid getting lost. She advised us to care about our time and told us not to go out without her permission. At first, my class at that time was very obedient. We excitedly took our luggage off the bus and prepared to wait for the moment to check in. After packing up, our class had a walk around the local market before dinner started. While walking a group of girls was attracted to a scary scene. All their attention was on the strange house in the area. Behind the big fence gate was a man tied with a thick chain. This man let out a devilish laugh his eyes widening as if they were going to fall out. His mouth was torn open to the ears. After looking closely at him, they realized that there were scary scratches behind that wrinkled skin and very scary blood red lips. After seeing the scary man looking at them, the group of girlfriends were all scared and shouted, then pulled each other away at the same time. By late afternoon, our students were present and gathered at the hotel. Then, it was the time when we were free to do what we wanted. The group of girls from earlier gathered into a group to eat snacks with the class teacher, then told her the story of the scary man they had met at the market earlier. After listening, the teacher thought for a while and said that people in the village often told each other that there was a cursed straw scarecrow in the middle of the village's wasteland. If no one looked into the scarecrow's eyes immediately, as crazy as that man did. Our students did not know the truth of the story that the teacher told them at the time. We only felt it was something haunting. I thought it was just an ordinary gossip story when suddenly disaster struck our class. In the middle of the night, two students escaped to the moor to go on a date and enjoy the scenery together. The two sat under the night sky looking at the stars in the sky discussing the upcoming college entrance exam and promises. But after a while the male friend felt like fiddling with something and started looking around. Unknowingly, some invisible power prompted him to look ahead of the moor and call his female friends to take a look. The two discovered a very large straw scarecrow standing in the middle of the field. The straw scarecrow kept swaying in the wind like some invisible magic calling for the male friend's attention. The female friend suddenly remembered the class teacher's story before and felt a little uneasy. But in contrast to the female friend, the male friend was extremely excited. He took his girlfriend's hand and asked her to run with him to the scarecrow's place. But the female friend was too obsessed with the story the teacher told earlier and didn't know if the wasteland the teacher was talking about was here or not. So the female friend still didn't dare to go with the male friend to the scarecrow's place. As a result, the male friend thought his girlfriend was a coward and decided to go to the scarecrow alone to prove his bravery. Although the girlfriend in the back kept calling and advising the male friend to come back, in a moment she saw him walking to the middle of the field, passing through the rice field. After that, the male friend walked in front of the straw scarecrow he planned to bring the straw scarecrow to his girlfriend's place on his own. It wasn't until he came face to face with the straw scarecrow that he realized that it was no ordinary straw scarecrow. Somehow the scarecrow's eyes were red like blood. By some magic power, its whole body moved and let out crazy laughter. When the student saw the scene, he was so scared that his face was pale, his mouth was speechless and he couldn't utter any more words. Until the student knew he had encountered something evil, he shouted and ran for his life. He ran to his girlfriend and told her to run back to the hotel quickly, much to her surprise. 
He didn't bother to explain anything more. He just grabbed the female student's hand and pulled her quickly back to the hotel. In the final moments, the female student also turned to look at the strange straw scarecrow, clearly feeling it was glowing and chasing the two. The following morning, there was a chaotic incident for all the hotel staff and our students at the whole hotel where we were staying. For everything to go smoothly, the teacher immediately asked the female students to go back to the room together so that she could deal with it outside. But not long after we returned to the room, there was a scream of fear from the class teacher outside the hallway. The students in the room were also surprised to go outside to listen, and the whole corridor immediately became crowded with people. After several calls to the hospital, students in my class stopped in front of a room with bewildered eyes. The person in the room was a male student. He didn't know what was wrong with him, but he frantically smashed and scratched his face with his hands. After a while, he was silent, making many people mistakenly believe that he was gradually regaining his composure. Unexpectedly, <laughs> when he raised his face to look at everyone, he revealed his madness with a form that no longer resembled a person. He scratched his face with his hand, the corner of his mouth also revealed a wide and vague smile. Everything happened at the hotel at the time. The girlfriend also witnessed this. She believed that her boyfriend was cursed by the scarecrow in the wasteland. Moments later, local medical staff also showed up. More and more people came to watch, making the scene extremely panicky. The female students outside looked at each other fearfully and said that the male friend was being transformed into the same crazy man they saw in the marketplace. The medical staff took a lot of time to restrain the male student with a thick blanket and then bring him to the hospital, waiting for his parents to pick him up. Only the female friend who had accompanied him that night was truly haunted. She still couldn't forget the face and look he gave her when the doctor put him in the ambulance. His face and mouth were now covered with red blood, his eyes were crazy and his skin was pale like a completely different person. After the incident we quickly got into the bus and left with a tense atmosphere. Most people were worried about the other male friend's condition. As for the female friend, she couldn't stop crying. Her eyes filled with sadness that no one could soothe. Perhaps it was the most memorable and terrifying trip of our student life that all those present at the time could not forget.